comic books. Even if you don't read them, you know about them. They inspire movies, TV shows, and even conventions. To date, it is one of the biggest pop culture phenomenons, and the popularity just keeps on growing. And with more and more series and characters than ever before, and with Hollywood churning out films like no one's business, it's no wonder that the popularity is at an all-time high. So, with such a worldwide craze for comic books, why is Birmingham the best place to experience this culture? Let's go find out. When I was a kid, I used to get uh, Spider-Man, Ultimate Spider-Man, delivered to my house, uh, which was really cool. Um, I used to read them all the time, and then, uh, and then when I was allowed to go into Birmingham by myself, uh, when I was old enough, uh, on the weekends, I used to go down to uh, Forbidden Planet and Nostalgia Comics. Uh, I used to read stuff off the shelves. Um, I never used to buy anything at first, but uh, kind of got hooked back onto it and kept buying more and more until I had a little collection going. It just kind of became part of my life, kind of became part of who I was as a person. And it was all because of places like Nostalgia Comics, which is, uh, which is a bit of a staple in Birmingham. It's been there for God knows how long. And uh, yeah, it, it's always been there and it's always been part of the culture. So it really kind of brings it, brings it together as a city. Got some uh, superior carnage and Bob's Burgers. Um, interesting combination, but uh, carnage is rad. These are my new favorites. Uh, we've got Captain Marvel. I have several of the first issue because I'm a big fan. Um, this is actually to me. I helped Batman save a case. Dear Zach, thanks for your help in saving the Cat 2000 robbery. Couldn't have done it without you, Batman. Proudest moment of my childhood. Uh, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually quite excited about going in and speaking to them. Um, yeah, they've been there for 30 years or so, so they've got quite a unique perspective on uh, on the way that the culture works. Um, but it would also be quite interesting to learn more about the actual shop itself. So uh, quite excited. What sort, of, uh, what sort of changes have you seen in the, in the store over the past? Well, I've been here now, probably longer than I care to remember. Uh, thir over 33 years I've been manager of the store. So, um, and I've probably seen quite a lot. I mean, there's been changes in the comic industry. Um, I mean, when I started, there weren't that many comic companies around. Obviously, Marvel and DC were around. Then a few independent companies started up. And it's been through lots of different things, with black and white booms, shiny covers, variant covers. You know, popular comics have been there and then, you know, ten years later nobody's heard of them anymore. Uh, so there's been a lot of changes in that. Um, obviously, uh, in terms of media, I mean, when I started, uh, it would have been the Superman films, I think. There weren't a lot of comic book movies and TV shows, and now, obviously, there's that many comic book movies yeah. and comic book TV shows, and you know, that's made a... One or two. Every yeah, yeah, that's it. That's made a huge difference as to just customer base and mm. things like that. It doesn't make as much difference as you might think in the fact that, you know, when a movie comes out we don't get lots of people coming in for comics for, you know, you don't, you don't see big increase in sales or anything like that. But you do get that increase in awareness of people suddenly, you know, all of a sudden you've got like, young children who you know, probably shouldn't know who Deadpool is, but they all know who Deadpool <laughs> is and all the young girls know who Harley Quinn is and you know they've all seen these things in the movies or they've seen the TV shows. Um, I mean that is one of the things that's changed as well. I think we get a lot more of a younger audience now yeah. than we used to. Um, I mean when we first opened, we, I mean comics obviously weren't as big as they are now, but we, we've always had a good strong audience. Um, but a lot of it at the time were you know men in their you know twenties, thirties, people who'd grown up reading comics in the seventies and eighties mm. and carried on reading, and you know you've you got a few more new customers in and things like that. Um, but 
again just recently, just I think again because of the films and the TV and the Big Bang Theory was another thing that made such a difference. Yeah. Because the amount of people that would come into the shop and go, oh look, it's a Big Bang Theory shop, but it's like, <laughs> you know, we, we were here a little bit yeah. before then. Just, just, a, just a tad, yeah. 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 So, so yeah, I mean, it has, it's changed, you know, quite a lot. There's, there's like I say, a lot more young people, and a lot more uh, females interested in comics than there used to be as well. I mean, there's, mm. you know, there's a, a lot of strong female characters around now that they can which relate is, which to. Which is always, yeah. always good, yeah. for the, good for the industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, what would you say makes this city the best spot for where you are? I think it's because... It's kind of cliche, but there's always been such kind of an alternative scene here. Mm. Like there's Oasis Market and yeah. it's like quite a big kind of goth, emo y kind of subculture. Sort of grungy, sort of so there's lots of alternative right. kids and it's like Tolkien, you know, based a bunch of like Middle Earth on yeah. sites around Birmingham, got Black Sabbath here, so mm. it, it's not so scary or weird to be <laughs> weird in no. Birmingham. It's like not compared to some places. So there's all it's that kind of openness plus this shop's been here in some form or the other since 1977. Mm. So it's like, it's like one of the oldest comic shops in England. So it's like, it's always had that access for kids here. So we've always kind of grown up coming here. Mm. So it's not like, it's not strange. It's, yeah, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's like a Birmingham's like a good melting pot for like art and being a bit different and everything. So mm. it's just a bit more kind of like, I would, I what would, you would call acceptable, right? Really. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that 100%. I used to go to the Sarah Hall Mill for the, for the Tolkien weekends yeah. when I was a kid, so that was perfectly normal for me. Um, but yeah, that's that's, um, that's quite interesting. Yeah, you, you br we that. get, like, sorry, we get like parents coming in all the time, like, mm. oh, you know, I'm bringing the baby in, sort yeah. of thing, and bringing the little ones, and I used to come here as a kid, and now I'm bringing them, sort yeah. of thing. And it's, it really is a generational thing of people coming in. You know, because they brought the kids away from their grandkids, and, mm. and they're just like they want to show like, the next yeah, generation. So this is this is what I grew yeah. up with. And, you know, and here's you know, your I first want, comic. I want you, you know, to to feel the same like way. Your first I trip did. in the comic shop. What do you think of it, kind of thing? Yeah, no, it's, uh, we it's make really, a we make a we make a big push on like free comic book day as well. Yes, I've been up yes. for a few of those. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we make a huge push on those. Yeah, we really so push the boat out and we get everybody involved and quite a few of us as well, we do like to get kids reading, mm. so we're very kind of heavily on getting kids reading, but getting kids reading the right things, mm. and not, you know, eight year olds throwing off into something they shouldn't be. No, that so, makes, that makes yeah. sense. I mean, uh, I found I found that um, with the free comic book day that you uh, you host here sometimes is that you find, you, you find sometimes you get something new that you yeah, wouldn't definitely. have expected to ever have over mm -hmm. before, you wouldn't have gone in and said, oh, that. And you end up reading it thinking, oh, this is actually really yeah. interesting. And then I ended up going it, buying more of that. It's comic. how they get you. And it is and it is it is a great, great little great little um, way to just get you in interested, not even in just comics in general, but in a in a series that you may not have yeah. previously cared about. But yeah, I really enjoy them. Yes, <laughs> really like we those. enjoy them too. I can imagine. Yes. Yeah, very good. Um, it's tiring. Yeah, because you can. I imagine those are the days you get a lot of people coming in just because it's yeah, and it's free stuff. We it? we open early as well, and <laughs> we're usually in costume. Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't been down for one of those, but uh, I might. I might make yeah. the might, might, the, might yeah. make the effort this time. Next time we have one, um, that's quite. Yes. <laughs> that must be quite fun. Yeah. Last year I was dressed as Thor. The year before that was Rocket Raccoon. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Which 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 Thor? The the, the new Thor. The new Thor. Which people? I really like the new Thor. Cause yeah, I love the new Thor. She's got a much better set of yeah. uh, set of abilities. This is a segue, but it, it's strange how people are complaining about like the new Thor or the mm. way Cap's being written. And you can tell they've not even read it. Yeah, it's a shame. It's, yeah, it's a shame because that that is a really good series yeah. with the new Thor. It's amazing. I find the social media really really quite useful. Uh, and I think that's really helpful for for um, for stores like this anyway because it's. I, th I think we've noticed a bit of uh, an upturn as well because I, I guess that it's as silly as it sounds. The hashtag has become a powerful thing. Yeah. So somebody who wasn't necessarily looking to come and see us when they see that we've hashtag Batman or Spider Man, mm. they might be looking at a TV program or the film, yeah. or or they're looking for a present online for nieces and nephews or whatever the thing is 
and they kind of stumble across us mm. and then they see all the pictures and everything we've got in store and they're like oh surely they'll have something we want and, and yeah. we, we kind of pick up that and we've kind of noticed since we've really pushed hard in terms of Instagram and the images and we've we've done uh, competitions for followers as well like mm. follower number 400 and then we'll pick someone within the followers to get a free goodie bag and that kind of thing we, it's the upturn in the in those kind of items is, is really we're getting people coming in and going oh I saw you on Instagram I didn't even know you guys were here <laughs> and we've had loads of people set up standing orders and stuff so it's it's really starting to pull in a new crowd for us so mm. we've just got to kind of keep going with that keep hitting it hard and keep the flow of new customers coming in we've actually got one of our one of our hashtags he's yeah. doing massively well um, we never we're never quite able to get it to trend on the day but um, Roy, who's the guy who does a lot of the ordering of the Funko, right. um, we started a hashtag Roy's Funko Fun Time mm. just to play him up a little bit. That's yeah. the, it literally was just to play Roy up. <laughs> and we checked earlier, and it um, uh, post wide, like, so I guess most of it's born out of this shop, and then mm. people will have gone and used itself. But it's like nearly 900,000 times it's been hashtagged. <laughs> So I don't know how much of that is us putting pictures or people that are customers, but we're going to claim it. So even if it's yeah, not us, even if it's somewhere else, we're claiming that. If you've, that if you've, if you've, if you've <laughs> started it, you, you have every right to really. That's that's mad. Nine hundred thousand. Yeah. So we're claim we're claim. It's been on nine hundred thousand different posts. <laughs> wow. So we're claiming it. I mean, chances are it probably isn't us, but we're claiming it anyway. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Do it, man. That's fantastic. Right. My favourite kind of superhero, I won't say series, but mm. um, I started reading the X-Men when I was like 13, 14, because mm. it, it's cliche, but the X-Men are like one of those kind of things that are really easy to relate to if yeah. you're having like a hard time where you're bullied in if school. You, if you or, feel like an outcast. Yeah, because it's like the core value of that book is that there's all these kind of people from all over the world who've got problems, but it doesn't matter because they're a family together. Yeah and they're really strong together. And that's quite comforting. My favourite character is probably uh, Daredevil. He's the one that I remember picking up on, you know, when I was younger. I really loved all the early Daredevil stuff. And then uh, back when Frank Miller took over, it was fantastic. Yeah. And it's carried on. I mean, it's had its ups and downs, but there's been some really good runs. Mm. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis did a fantastic run on it. Um, and just recently, um, Mark Wayne and Chris Samley did a fantastic run. Mm. And so, it's, you know, that, that's the one that I always kind of return back to. There was, I don't know what it was about. There was something about the idea of the, you know, the blind man who could, yeah. with his enhanced senses and stuff he's, like that. He's always yeah. been one of my favourites. Yeah, yeah, so you had a great supporting cast as yeah. well. So yeah. I've always just been totally obsessed with anything Batman, and it's hard to shake that. And um, I fell in love with Harley Quinn in '92 mm. when the animated series came out. So most of the things I go for are Batman and Harley related. Mm. I think today's really opened up my eyes to just how much of a staple this store is to the culture in Birmingham. Um, you know, I've learned quite a lot about the way people shop here, for one thing. You know, it, it's quite a generational thing, not just a, you know, going with my dad and whatnot. You know, it's more of a, a generational going in with parents, loved ones for years on end. Um, and it's really kind of shown me just how much of a, almost a community that this, this place has formed over its period of being open and I really like that. Comic books, they aren't just for kids, they aren't just for adults, they are something far more special. Birmingham's great for comics. <laughs> they are a medium, a culture, a tradition. They are the cornerstone to one of the biggest communities in the world and Nostalgia Comics in Birmingham has given this community a home. If anyone watches this narrative, I'm after a Suicide Squad number 15, variant or dog cast, so if anyone sees this, shout it up to your man and he can, he can let me know. A place where people from all walks of life, all ages, can come together and connect over these spectacular stories.